Hi everyone, I'm Mate, uh, the co-founder and CTO at Seven Bridges. Um, so today I'm going to be talking to you about um, AI and supply chain and logistics. So we are a startup based in the UK. We're a small company, about 55 people, um, and we are doing the exciting process of paying uh, freight bills. So receiving invoices, verifying them, paying them. This is a huge market, very, very messy today and very manual process involving lots of people. So definitely a good candidate for automation. Um, so why, why do we use AIP? Uh, for us, it's three things. So speed to market, ease of use, and flexibility to pivot. So we've, um, you know, as a startup, we need to be able to pivot to our users' needs really, really quickly, and that's exactly what we get from AIP. Um, we've actually been building things and getting them to production in weeks with a smaller team than it's, than it's taken us uh, to, do, like, to do for months of our current team. So um, first thing I wanted to take you through after this is how, how does Freight Audit work? So, um, there are three core inputs to this. There are the invoice themselves, the shipping documents, the contracts with the provider, and effectively you match these three and then you find out any discrepancies and you, or, and you dispute them. So you send a, a message, an email, or via API to the carrier to say this is a problem. So these three data sets all come from very different systems, very, very different uh, terminologies, and I'll show you some of that a bit later on. Um, so what have we actually built in AIP? So we've got here kind of a three steps. Uh, the first is the shipment and invoice extraction. So we've built a connector to Gmail. Uh, we pull out all the, the threads and all the attached documents. Uh, we classify those um, with LLMs and we extract structured data um, using logic functions. And then that then creates our shipment and invoice ontology um, for those pieces. Then it's the rate card in the contract. So uh, we built a, a human in the loop workflow uh, builder workflow system to effectively take the semantic meaning out of the rate card and put it into a structured format that an LLM can understand. Uh, just on its own, it's a bit too complex uh, at this point. So we have to have that step. And finally, coming together uh, in step three is the audit itself. So this is where we, we take those two pieces of data and ask an LLM to see where the discrepancies exist, um, create disputes and alerts where, they, where those uh, discrepancies are, and then using an automation function, push that through a Kafka uh, stream into our application. So let's, uh, let me show you, through, uh, show you a real life example of this. Uh, right, so here we've got the, the shipment inbox. Um, we've got the threads, the emails on the left-hand side. Uh, we have the documents in the middle, and then uh, you can see a preview of the documents and all the classifications of those documents here. Um, and then uh, you can see the complexity of that here, and it's, it's very messy and very different from provider to provider. And on the right-hand side, you've got a structured set of data of the shipment, all the details that are important for auditing, and at the same time, you've also got the invoice. So all the different charges are in here, um, all the different totals, and you can see the totals for the shipment. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the rate card for this, uh, for this shipment. And actually, before that, I'm going to show you just a couple of different variants, just so you can see the complexity here. Uh, this is a rate card for ocean freight shipment, um, and you can see uh, quite a messy spreadsheet, lots of different terminology here, quite a lot of numbers. Um, and then this is an exactly the same type of uh, rate card for a, a similar type of shipment, and you can see it's completely different, different language, different structure, different logic application. So what we, what we built is a kind of 10-step process. Uh, we've got here uh, somewhere where the user can uh, load the, sh the relevant sheets in, in, from the rate card into, the, into this application. Um, then we pass those through an LLM, which then asks questions where there are any uh, discrepancies. And here we've got a discrepancy, and the user just said this charge is not relevant. You can ignore it. And then finally, we have the, uh, the kind of structured standardized set of data. So this effectively generates a uh, applicability formula and a cost formula. So these are algebraic formulas um, that will then give us uh, some idea of if a charge sh should be applied and what the cost should be. And you can see this, this formula is what we're going to be passing into a logic function next. So finally, bringing it together, this is a, a logic function. Um, and what we're doing here is we are going to be we are going to be bringing in uh, ele um, elements from the ontology, the invoice um, comes in. We've got the shipment and any related rate cards we're bringing in, matching those semantically because the charge names are not the same. And then finally, there's a set of LLMs to make a number of checks on the um, charges themselves. And you can see we're passing ontology objects to the input data. We're dictating a, a, a specific structure of the output that we need so, so that downstream systems can understand it. And then what we're going to do is use the debugger on the right-hand side. So this lets us take a, an invoice and pa pass it through that chain. 
Uh, you can see here we're using the calculator tool built into Foundry. So this takes the, uh, the formula in the rate card and pulls in the relevant variables, all done through language models. And then at the end, um, we spit out a well-formed email message to the carrier, which we'll see in a minute, um, to say, okay, what was was there anything wrong uh, with the shipment? Um, and actually, when you when we get down to it, you'll see there were uh, two charges that were uh, were discrepancies. So this is 137 pounds, um, and this email is now ready to go. So we now we have the output. Uh, we want to send this to our system um, for processing. We have two ways of doing that. Uh, either we can push it to our system using webhooks, uh, which is what I'll demo, you, demo to you in a second, or you can use the OSDK and pull the, the data directly through the REST APIs. Um, I'll show you a little bit about both of those methods, but just to demo the, the, the stream here, we have an automation set. So every time a invoice object is created, uh, we will push um, a set of data into our um, into the stream. Um, we define here the, the payload. So this is uh, an, an authority object with some linked, uh, linked objects um, with six or seven different fields. Um, and then once we have that, uh, you can see here uh, the topic that it's, that's receiving this data. Um, and we've got the various different um, instances of this. And you'll see down here that we've got the, the dispute coming in, the email message that you just saw, the, the idea of the tracking code, and then the dispute amount. Um, Finally, it will appear in our system. So this is the Seven Bridges platform, uh, and in here you see the um, you see the audit section, and you can see where we are um, loading disputes. Um, and at the top of the list, you can see the uh, dispute that was created by Palantir, the 137 pounds. Um, that's been pushed into our system. It's now visible. Let me click into it. Um, we'll see the message itself, and now uh, that's ready to go to the carrier. Um, the carrier will receive this. They'll respond, um, and uh, that'll be the that'll be that. Um, finally, just a quick note on the OSDK. Uh, we've got here um, the OSDK, which allows us to query the data by API. These this documentation is also generated and um, can you can you, you can access any of your objects this way, um, and it's very simple, very easy to use. Um, and what we've got here is just an example of us doing that. So we're just calling, uh, calling the URL, uh, sending our secret in, and then um, telling, the, telling it what the message is that we want to sell to the, send to the carrier. And this is done automatically uh, without actually having to touch our system at all. Um, so that's it. Um, you know, for us, these are the main reasons that we're, we're using AIP. Um, I hope it's been interesting and that you are, you're inspired to use it for your own use cases. Thanks. <laughs>